Hello. In the UK, there are almost six million carers, dedicated individuals providing a significant level of care to someone with a serious mental illness or physical disability. Carers can come from any walk of life. They can come from a variety of cultures and religions and could be of any age, sometimes as young as five. As a healthcare professional, it's important to understand the role that carers play in the overall well-being of the patient. Incorporating the views and experiences of a carer will not only benefit the patient in the long term, but can often be beneficial in helping you as the healthcare professional provide a better level of care, help build better relationships with the patient and help you understand their specific needs. In this short film, we'll meet some of the carers who care for loved ones. We'll hear in their own words some of the challenges faced by them and discover how even the smallest changes can greatly benefit the person receiving care and everyone involved with their long-term care. I see myself as a 24-hour carer because I can't stop what I'm doing and clock out and go home because it's a 24-hour job. You have to be there all the time for all the needs. My name's Karen. I care for my mum. My mum's got depression and sometimes it can get that bad that she has breakdowns right in front of me and I have to end up putting pillows in front of her head to stop her banging her head off walls, doors, etc. I don't describe myself as a carer. Um, I'm her sister, and for me, that's what families do for each other. Hi, my name's Ellie, and I'm 12 years old, and I look after my mum. Um, I've been looking after my mum for about four years now, um, and she's got manic depression. And basically, what I do is I go and see her every day and spend a couple of hours with her, like doing her housework and making her cups of tea and making her food and stuff and making sure that she sleeps properly. I first become a carer, I think, when I was around about eight or nine. And then going into my teens, I think I become a lot more active and a lot more vocal. In recent years, progress has been made in improving the relationship between health professionals, carers and the patient. Health professionals are already starting to see the benefits of establishing this type of three-way partnership, as outlined in the document, The Triangle of Care. However, there is still more work that can be done. In today's target-driven, high-pressured health service, some of the smaller details can often be overlooked. Not listening to carers and failing to incorporate their views in important decisions can often leave the carers feeling excluded or leave them feeling that the patient is not receiving the best care possible. Carers are the ones who know this person better than anyone and can help professionals make a better care plan. Here are some of the experiences of the carers that we talk to. One of my main areas of concern was her physical symptoms. She seemed to be actually physically ill when she went into hospital and from what I could see that wasn't dealt with and I've since learned actually that the ward staff are not qualified to and not able to by law to, to deal with physical illness. Why didn't somebody tell me that and explain to me what channels would have to be gone through for, for that to happen. It's this mythical office where a lot of staff will congregate and it's very difficult for uh, people to actually come onto a ward and to break that barrier. You feel as though you go in their territory, it's a bit like my sister said, it always feels like the, the, the old school staff room and it was just, a, it was, you know, you did something, you knocked on the door at your own peril. When my dad had his breakdown, he wouldn't take any of his tablets, which scared me and mum lots because he's also diabetic and has heart problems. We had a big meeting at home and I felt that the workers weren't very prepared to speak to the whole family. And it felt like the whole way through that they completely ignored me and my mum, which I thought was really nasty. They treat you like children and not the way you should, would expect to be treated. They try and it blank you out and they feel that you're invisible but they hardly know anything about it. It's you that's always on the receiving end. Our son was in hospital, we visited, and there wasn't a, a very warm welcome in as much that they are in a hospital, that's their home, and it could be for some time. And how do we greet somebody to our home? We offer them a cup of tea, 
and a smile and we're not ignored and left to wonder what, what's going to happen next. The more difficult processes uh, that I've experienced over the years is when uh, you've been unable to be, or I've felt I've been able to speak uh, honestly and uh, openly. You always have to be very persistent and uh, very repetitive in, in trying to actually get information back from people. If my sister was well supported and well looked after, I wouldn't be here talking to this camera. I wouldn't be having a problem with it. I wouldn't have spent all those hours of my life trying to tell people what I think is, is needed. In today's multicultural society, it's more important than ever to understand the differences in culture, ethnicity and religion. Health professionals often need to be respectful of service users or carers' age, cultural or ethnic differences, and recognise that their actions, views and beliefs may be very different from their own. There is a large percentage of carers under the age of 15, so it's also important that health professionals recognise the role that young people play in caring for a loved one. They really need to recognise the problems first and tell us there's a problem and listen to us when we say there's a problem instead of ignoring. That's the main key, is that I felt completely ignored. And that was what I hated the most. I've noticed the staff speak different language and sometimes it's very difficult. So I think it's important to have individual that can translate information to the patient because if they're away from home, they're into a strange environment, not understanding what's happening. So they need to have somebody that can explain things to them. And that would help their recovery, I'm sure. I come from a, a mixed race family. My mum is half Jamaican. She was born and brought up in London. So when our uncle died and she was trying to cry and, and, and express herself, she wasn't allowed to. She even asked for a separate quiet room where she could go and scream and shout and cry and she wasn't given one. In fact, she was medicated. We grew up in, in countries where people did express themselves freely and that's not being recognised or taken into account by the people who are working with her. Sometimes when you're dealing with people who have cultural identity problems, which my sister did and, and still does, if you're coming into an environment whereby all the professionals, your doctor is white, you, you know, the, the, all the ward staff are white, that sort of reinforces some sort of like inferiority that that person may be feeling. Walsall in particular was um, a good experience. There were black doctors and there were black nurses and there were black managers. And that helped to reinforce that you, you're not inferior. I think it goes some way to actually helping the eating process. Today's health service has become more and more reliant on technology and it's now easier than ever before to share information between departments and other agencies. Concerns over confidentiality, however, continue to be a stumbling block when it comes to sharing information with carers, and often carers feel a lack of common sense has prevented information from being shared at all. Communication, I think, is, is vital. It's the main component to actually being able to effectively deal with the patient. If you don't have communication, um, in my opinion, you don't have anything as far as the treatment plan. I've experienced where I've given somebody information they appear to be paying good attention, but then you find out that that information has not gone anywhere else. It has not been passed on. What's the, what's the use in spending half an hour of your life telling somebody something if they keep it to themselves? I used to speak to them quite freely about uh, medication and uh, about uh, care plans. Then when there was this major disagreement, all of a sudden they said that uh, you're not the nearest relative and we can't discuss this with you. And that, uh, that just stifled the process, which was quite free-flowing before. It just felt to me as though they were using that as, as a barrier to uh, not to move forward with uh, my ideas and my opinions. In 
this video we've heard of some of the problems which have been faced by carers in the past. But now there's commitment at all levels to improve carers' experience through better communication, understanding and training. Health professionals are beginning to have more understanding of the role that carers play in the everyday support of the patient and how carers often have a wealth of knowledge about their relative which can sometimes go unnoticed by medical staff. Sharing information can help provide a better understanding of the patient's illness and carers are now beginning to feel that they can ask questions or offer support to staff when necessary and feel their views are taken into consideration in care planning. Sharing information, resources and knowledge is critical and sometimes the small things can make a huge difference. The staff were very inclusive. They asked me about my son. They asked me about how he used to behave before he was ill. Um, and they, they did recognise me as his main carer. When a carer has first contact with services, it's such a crucial time. And if you can manage to begin a relationship with the family at that point, it, it can be so beneficial to go on to work in, in, in a three-way partnership. When my son was admitted, if they'd only said to us, you know, what's he interested in, what does he like doing, or, or we'd been allowed to give that information, it would have been so much more helpful for me to be able to say, well, this is the football team that he's absolutely passionate about, and probably if you talk to him about that, you know, that's a good starting off point for making a relationship. It's just getting to know people as individuals and, and, and forgetting this professional client uh, type of relationship. You're not a bank manager and I'm not a customer, you know, uh, you're, you're dealing with you're stripping down the most personal information which outside of the family unit other people wouldn't know. Those in charge of the wards should take more notice of the carers because they know more about their ways more than the, the nurses. They might know about how to give them medication but that isn't enough. They need to know why they behave the way they do. A good worker who's like working with my mum would probably like if we were in a room they they wouldn't just talk to my mum and, and, and they would like, include me and you know talk to me about what they're going to say to my mum. So it would be nice if they then like talk to me and say, oh well, you know, and help me understand what manic depression is. I remember going onto the ward and normally it's, it's straight into, you know, my sister, what, what the issues, what the problems, but uh, on this particular day, he said, um, would you like a coffee? And uh, we went in, I was still expecting to then start talking about my sister. And he just said, well, how are you doing, Paul? You know, what, what's happening in your life? You know, how are you coping with driving up and down the motorways? And, and first, it just took me back for a few seconds. It, it was just not a question ever posed to me in many years. And then was actually asked me directly, what, how are you actually directly feeling? as it actually yeah, affecting you and it was such a relaxing tour to be able to then go on to talk about many other things. By talking openly to carers we've learned that carers want to be listened to and have a voice especially in helping to plan care for their relative. They need to feel able to ask questions and have their views or concerns taken seriously. Support services need to provide relevant and up-to-date information to carers. Carers have first-hand experience of living with the patient and that inside information is invaluable in helping support services recognise the key warning signs and provide the best possible care. Carers can come from any walk of life, any age, religion or culture. Healthcare professionals need to take this into account when providing treatment and advice. And finally, young carers especially require a better understanding of the conditions faced by their parents and need detailed information of their illness in a language that's appropriate but not patronising. We should all be aiming for working in partnership as described in the Triangle of Care document. Staff service users and carers will all benefit from working collaboratively. As a professional, your focus will always be in providing the best possible care for the patient. All we ask is that you recognise there is a carer and that they play just as big a part in the well-being of that person as you do.